Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to another lecture given by the Springfield, Ohio Bible class. This is a school and it is not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Springfield branch was established in the year 1935. The president here in Springfield, Ohio, is Dr. Rhonda Miller. The vice president is Dr. Gurley Ramey, and the dean is Dr. Ronald Carr. In this school, we use the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and it has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. And it has been improperly substituted by Lord God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. And it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and that there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is a erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state he is inscrutable and incomprehensible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. Now we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, 
everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form <coughs> can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Then later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ. <laughs> now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to bear one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. Also in this school we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction a race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate, extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to honestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, 
to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah and Tim to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll begin by having a prayer by Dr. Lester Embry, a selection from the New Jerusalem Singers and scriptures by Dr. Rosemary Turner, Dr. Embry. Good evening, class. Good evening. Let us bow our hearts and minds in a moment of reverence. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we thank you for permitting us to assemble once again. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you bestowed upon us. We thank you for the vision and the revelation. We ask that as the speakers come forth, that you do the speaking. And we ask that as we sit in our seats, you quiet our minds, quiet our hearts, that we may hear and see more perfectly how you really are and as you actually exist. Mm -hmm. All these blessings we ask in the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Let the assembly say, Hallelujah. <clears throat>
class. For the scripture lesson this evening, I'll be reading Hebrews the chapter chapter 12. I be I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authority, authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trana of the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. That's Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, My son, despise not thou the chastening of Yahweh, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they verily, just for a few days, chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Excuse me. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, and let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which is without which no man shall see Yahweh. Look diligently lest any man fall fail of the grace of Yahweh. <clears throat> lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might not be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should be spoken that should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living Elohim, the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and congregation of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to Yahweh, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Yahshua, the Messiah, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escaped not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shall, not, I shall shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth 
the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, and those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve Yahweh acceptably with reverence and fear. For our Elohim is a consuming fire. That was Hebrews chapter 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Embry and the New Jerusalem Singers and Dr. Rosemary Turner. Before we call on our first speaker, we'd like to remind everyone to please silence all electronic devices. Now it's an honor and a pleasure to call for our first speaker. We'd like to call on Dr. Jeffrey Simmons. Dr. Simmons. classes ago and, and Dr. Carr, the dean, offered me the opportunity to continue on uh, talking about the age of dispensation. So we hope that you don't mind uh, seeing me up here again. No. Uh, and I hope that uh, what we're talking about uh, uh, is not only edifying but adds to the things that Yahweh has already uh, revealed unto us. That's what we come down here for, to grow in our understanding, to learn some things that we didn't already know, and to add to the things that Yahweh has already given us. Um, we were talking about the angels and dispensation, and we want to continue on with those, with that. Uh, but before we do, if someone can give for me volume one, I believe it is, and I want to say page 27 of the textbook, uh, <clears throat> quite a few things. Um, that Yahweh has allowed us to share with you uh, being up here. And one of the things, uh, that I, I, I often forget, I just really don't even think about it, that there are uh, people viewing us uh, as our class is going on on, on what, YouTube. YouTube, And uh, someone uh, talked with some brethren this weekend, and uh, one of the questions that they had asked me, they said that they heard me say, uh, that Satan was cast out of heaven into the darkness that was surrounding the earth plane. And they said that's not how they've been taught over the years. They said they were taught that Satan was cast into the earth. And Satan saw Yahweh create Adam. And uh, so there's several places in the textbook I, I just can't uh, recall the different places that is at, but one place that I know for sure is volume one, page uh, 27, um, where Yahweh's talking about uh, what Dr. Killers is explaining the three states of existence uh, of Yahweh. And, and I always admonish people this, you know, uh, uh, because we didn't come down here. When we come down here, we didn't know anything. That's right. And, 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 and being in here doesn't mean that we know everything. We were wrong coming in this school, and we're going to get some things wrong uh, while we're sitting here. We right, right. might not understand things mm -hmm. um, clearly. And I always admonish people to try to find out what the founder said about it. It doesn't matter uh, who's talking, find out what the founder said about it. He's the one that had the right. vision. Uh, and I would admonish everyone to find out what he said about it. And when you find out what he said about it, whether you understand it or not, Stick with it. Don't change it. Don't alter it uh, to fit the way that we think. And I'm not saying that's what this person done. Don't. I'm not saying that at all. I'm speaking in, in general as admonishment. Uh, don't try to take something uh, to make it fit the way that we think it ought to be. Uh, just find out what he said about it and and stick with that. Now this is one of the places that he uh, expressed that thought uh, about Satan being cast uh, out of heaven. This is, this is volume one, 
page 27, and the header is Yahweh is super incorporeal form Elohim. So Yahweh is super incorporeal form Elohim. Now that's Yahweh, who is pure spirit, in this shape and form of a man without any physical or fleshly counterpart. That's Yahweh is super incorporeal form. Go ahead. Um, number two, next in the illustrations, Unity Part 2 and Superincorporeal Form, pages 31 and 33, we are showing how that Yahweh, by the process of transmutation, took on superincorporeal form, in part, not in totality. It didn't take all the pure spirit to make this spirit embodiment. That's in part, not in totality. Before he began to create the angelic host. Now he done that before. See, one of the things that I've read that the founder said that Yahweh always takes on shape and form before he begins to create the <coughs> See, so we're talking about Yahweh's pure spirit state. We talked about that. That's what this fire represents, Yahweh uh, uh, being a consuming fire. And everything in the universe abides within that pure spirit state of Yahweh. And he took on shape and form right within the realm of eternity. That's the son in the bosom of the father. You can read that in Isaiah 57, 15. Go ahead. After the physical creation, Yahweh in this super incorporeal form, Elohim, was seen by Moses and the prophets in visions and communicated with them See Exodus 24, 9 and 10, Proverbs 8, 22. And you always read about the word depending on Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so forth. So Moses saw that super corporate form as well, Exodus 24, 9. Go ahead. In this condition, he was the universal archetype pattern of everything. Now he said in this condition. See, he's a universal archetype pattern of everything. Right. Everything is patterned after him. Go ahead. Incorporeal and physical. Both incorporeal and physical. That he thereafter created. That he thereafter created. Revelations 3, 14. Mm -hmm. In the illustration, in corporeal form, page 34, we mean that in the realm of eternity, he created the spirit beings. See, in the realm of eternity. See, not in the realm of time, mm -hmm. but in the realm of eternity. He created the spirit beings as the angelic creation. Or the angelic host. Yes. First, before he created, he created first, the physical creation. Before he created the physical creation. <clears throat> and that's what this dotted line is showing. Right. See, one's drawn right out of the other one. Go ahead. Angels are ministering spirits mm -hmm. created to serve, honor, obey, and glorify Yahweh. See, and we were created for that self-same purpose. Mm -hmm. see, to serve, honor, obey, and glorify Yahweh. Go ahead. See Daniel 3.28, 7.27, Luke 1.19, and Hebrews 1.14. Okay. Lucifer, an angelic spirit creature, the son of the morning, because of his great beauty and okay. wisdom. Now everybody know Lucifer. See, the devil. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Wherewith Elohim had created him, lifted himself up, or rebelled against Yahweh. He exalted himself up above the throne of Yahweh. That's right. the way Ezekiel talked about it. And, 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 and Yahshua, to share this with you, and I've always heard Dr. Kelly say it this year. He said that Lucifer, see, uh, that great angelic spirit being, see, he was above Michael and Gabriel. Right? Mm -hmm. Those were the two archangels that we see on the mercy seat, and Lucifer was above them. Right. See, and Yahweh Elohim, see, who is Yahshua, he's sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. And because Lucifer was lifted up because of his beauty that he was created with, see, then he was cast out of heaven. And when Yahshua was sitting on that throne, that's when you read over in Luke, I believe it is, 1152 maybe, he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. See, so he was above Michael and Gabriel, but with him sitting on that throne, then he then Satan is cast right on down. See, and he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. See, and from, from what I understood, uh, that Dr. Kelly had it on the chart at one time. See, that uh, Lucifer had Lucifer up here, then he had him taken off. See, because he was cast down. 
Go ahead. This caused a rebellion in heaven among the angels. And therefore, Lucifer and his hosts were found guilty before yes. Elohim and were cast out of heaven into the ethereal darkness that surrounded the earth after the beginning of the physical now, you creation. see where they were cast out? See, they were cast into the earth plane. Because if Lucifer, as I said, as I said before, see, if Lucifer is cast into the earth plane, see, then Mother Earth, and I just can't find a better word, Mother Earth will be polluted. See, she'd be contaminated with the presence of Lucifer. Right. And, and, and Adam had to come forth from a virgin because the prophecy was or was that a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son. Right. And, if Lu and if Lucifer is in the earth plane before Adam's taken from virgin Mother Earth, then she is not a virgin. See, so he can't enter the earth plane until after Adam's taken forth. So he's cast into that darkness, mm -hmm. that ethereal darkness, see, that surrounded, see, the yet unfinished earth, mm -hmm. see. Uh, and, 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 and then Yahweh takes Adam from the dust of the ground, see, and places Adam in the garden. See, Mother Eve was taken out of Adam in the garden. She wasn't taken out like Adam was in the, uh, outside of the garden. Mm -hmm. But Adam was placed in the garden, and that's where the woman was taken out of Adam. See, and after Adam placed in that garden, then at that time, see, now Lucifer can enter the earth plane. See, and then it was also asked uh, that, uh, was also said that Adam saw, I mean, that Lucifer saw um, Yahweh create the man. Um, and that's why he wanted a body to get in. And, and, and I can't testify to that. I haven't read that Dr. Kelly said that Lucifer saw Yahweh create Adam. You know, I, I, haven't, I haven't read that, you know. So, but I wanted to share that uh, in case anybody else had a question about that, uh, then they would know where they could find that in the, in the textbook. That he was cast into the ethereal darkness see, right. before Adam was taken from the dust of the ground. And that's what makes Mother Earth a virgin, that the prophecy could be fulfilled, a virgin shall conceive and, and bring forth the sun. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So now we were talking about these uh, three physical ages. Let's just put it on the board here. Uh, the antediluvian age. Not anti. No. Anti. <laughs> right? right? Anti. Anti means against. Right? Mm -hmm. See, that's, then this age lasted some 1,656 years. See? Then this antediluvian <coughs> age. Post means after. Mm -hmm. I just put Dale U because I can't spell the word. Mm -hmm. All right, and this age lasts some two thousand three hundred and seventy-seven years. I want to point out a couple of things for you uh, before we move on. See, and where we're at now, see, is the present kingdom age. See, and we say this age is. 2,024 years wrong. We want to work with you with that number. Now these are three physical ages. See, the creative age, this is not a physical age. See, there's seven ages and seven dispensations. Mm -hmm. See, this creative age, this is not a physical age. It's just a, a, a spirit. It's a spirit, a spiritual uh, age, the creative age. See, then you have the three physical ages, see, the antediluvian, the post-diluvian, and the present kingdom age. See, then after this age runs its course, see, then you have the kingdom age, see, and the ages are yet to come. Those ages are not physical ages. See, those ages are, are, are that's what Paul talked about, this mortal is going to put on immortality. See, so these won't be physical ages. So we're talking about these three physical ages. Now, um, one of the things I wanted to point out because we've already worked the numbers on them. Uh, when, we at, when we reach Mount Sinai, that's Mount Sinai. That's Mount Sinai. When we reach Mount Sinai, uh, when we did the numbers, when we worked this out from the flood, this is a boat. 
See, from the flood, eight souls in there. When Noah and his, when this, when this post illuminate age began, it began after Noah came out of the ark. Mm -hmm. And we worked these numbers out. See, from the from the fall of, I mean, from the from the flood to Mount Sinai, it was 857 years. You remember uh, the promise was given to uh, Abraham in the year 427. And he said, after 400 years, I'm going to come down and judge that nation. So in that 400th year, he appeared on, down, Joshua appeared down the land of Egypt. Then 30 years later, they came up out of the land of Egypt. See, and that gives us 850 Seven years. We read that, I think, over in Galatians, the third chapter, that the law, which came 430 years after the promise. Uh, so that's year, that year 857, see, puts us right here at Mount Sinai. Now, also, if you take this uh, 857, and if we add the 1,656 years in the post-Diluvian age, add that to the 857. Uh, anti. The anti-Diluvian age, thank you. Add that to the 857 years. Good math? Mm -hmm. That's 2,513 years from the fall of Adam to the law. Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Now, Solomon's temple was 1,000 years after the law. That's when Solomon's temple was built and was dedicated. 490 years later, Yahshua is born. So you have Overlooking it. On some of the charts, you have right here at the Mount Mount Sinai, I have 1490. Am I missing it? Yeah, down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Left, right left here. side. Right left here. corner. Right here. 4000. BBY 4000 is 1490. See, this is 1490 years. Mount the law was 1490 years before the birth of Yahshua. 1490. So this year, 857 at Mount Sinai, 2513 from Adam to the law, and 1490 years from Yahshua back to the mountain, they're all the same year. They're not different years. They're different perspective, different points. Uh, 2513 is the antediluvian age, and in, uh, in the 857 years from the post-diluvian age to the Mount Sinai, to Mount Sinai, see that's 2,513 years. See, 857 years is from the opening of the post-diluvian age to Mount Sinai. Then 1,490 years is from Mount Sinai, or Yah, they said this way, from Yahshua back to Mount Sinai. So they're all the same year. 857, 2513, 1490. It's all the same year. Just thought I'd share that with you. They're not different years. They're all the self same year. Just looking at it from three different views. From the Adam to the mountain, from the flood to the mountain, from Yahshua to the mountain. All the same years. And you read about all of them. And then with that 2513, see that Dr. Kelly added the seven days of the creation to to give you the 25 20. See, that's on the pyramid. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Thought I'd share that with you again. All right. So now, let's erase this line right here. And give me again uh, the second Timothy 2 15. Study to show thyself approved. 2 Timothy 2.15 I, I erased that line for a reason. Go ahead. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, what um, we've understood about that is that means to put things in their proper place. See, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, see, then we have this age of dispensation chart. See, that allows us to put things in their proper place. And we always use the example, see, of the law that was given to Adam from Mount Sinai. See, that was, I mean, from, from uh, in the Garden of Eden, that law that was given to Adam, see, in this post-diluvian, antediluvian age, didn't apply to the children of Israel in this post-diluvian age. Right. And what made these ages different from one another, we have a line of demarcation that we've learned about, and that's the flood. See, when Yahweh told Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, see, when, when he told Noah, when he told Noah that, see, the end hadn't come yet. See, when he told Noah that, the end of all flesh has come before, before me, before me, see, then that put, is, uh, that put uh, that age uh, in a grace period. Because as far as Yahweh was concerned, it was already over with. It was already over and done with. But he gave Noah 120 years, see, to preach and to warn the people. So it was a 120 year grace period. See, 120 year grace period, see, between the time that Yahweh told Noah the end of all flesh has come to the time that it actually came. See. And when it when the end came, see, it said that only eight souls uh, entered, it, entered, entered into that ark. See, and when the waters came, see, and destroyed the uh, world with water, then that brought that age, see, that brought that age or that world to an end. Uh, 2 Peter 3 and 6. And 1 Corinthians, uh, have up here. 10th chapter. 2 Peter 3 and 6. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water to, perished. To, uh, world and age are words that are synonymous to one another. See, you, you ask me how, how long I've been in this world, I'll say 67 years. You ask me my age, I'll say 67 years. All did the same. See. So this age or this world was destroyed with water. That brought that age or that world to an end. Go ahead and finish reading. <coughs> Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water See, the world perished. that then was overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, See? reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of wicked men. See, so the, the planet didn't change. No. See, but the wickedness of men, see, <clears throat> brought Yahweh brought that world of that age to an end, and he destroyed it with water. See, that age, that world, those people, see, and those that uh, he, he had mercy on, so he sought to save, see, those souls, those eight souls, see, they entered into that ark that Yahweh told Noah to build for the saving of his household. Now, that don't mean only eight people were saved. Right. That right. meant eight souls entered into that ark. Mm -hmm. See, and that ark, it typifies the body of Yahshua the Messiah. Right. Now, you had those that died believing in right. what Noah preached. Yeah. See, so many died believing in what he preached. We don't have no number. We can't put a number on that. But there were more wicked than there were those that believed. Right. Okay. See, and, and those were destroyed. See, they were banging on that, we say banging on that door. See, trying to get in. I want you to know they weren't banging on that door. <laughs> it was just an impossibility. You know. Yahweh, Yahweh gave them the opportunity. See, Noah preached for 120 years and people helped Noah See, just like they supported the founder, just like they've supported this teaching all this time. See, and because time has gone on so long and the end hadn't come, see, then people have fallen away. See, Satan has been able to um, deceive people, cause people uh, to lose faith, mm -hmm. uh, cause people to deny the Redeemer, 
that bought them, the one that they have confessed with their mouth, right. yeah, that Yahshua is our Savior. That is his name. See, and, 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 and Dr. Kelly said, and, and I, he, he got it out of the Bible, he said, if it was possible, if he didn't cut this age short, it's, right. Satan is so strong, it's possible that he could deceive the very yeah, elect. That's right. And that's how much power Yahweh mm -hmm. has given him. See? Right. And we see that, we're witnessing to that, because many of the people that's been raised up in this school that taught us, I'm mm -hmm. just using it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that have uh, the we have said under the sound of their voice and understood some of these mysteries that Yahweh has revealed. Yeah. See, they have fallen away. Right. Mm -hmm. See, I'm talking about from the faith. See, I'm talking about they have denied their Redeemer. Mm -hmm. See, and, and by denying Him, they have changed His name. Right. See, mm -hmm. see, and substituted His name for another name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And He said, "I will not give my glory." To another name. Right. See, so the, the, Satan is alive. He's powerful. Mm -hmm. see, and if Yahweh don't keep us, see, yes. we're subject to fall by the wayside just like that. That's correct. See? Yeah. And so what happened with Noah back here? See, when he when when Yahweh told Noah the end of all flesh has come before him, and he gave him 120 20 years. And somebody just let's just read um, uh, when Noah entered into that ark. See, because I want you to see what happened. See, we've had some heavy rains. You know, you go outside and it's just running to your car raining so hard. Right? We say it's raining cats and dogs out there. You know, raining so hard that uh, uh, it causes a river to rise and people have to <coughs> flee their homes. Right? That didn't happen with Noah. They didn't have time to run and bang on the door and say, Noah, let me in like you see in the movies. When Yahweh destroyed the world with Noah, he said when Noah entered into that ark and he sat there for seven days, mm -hmm. then people ridiculed mm -hmm. Noah. Mm -hmm. See. Build a, 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 a boat, build a ship, and ain't no water around. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> see. See. And yet they some of those people helped Noah build that ark. See. But when Noah entered that ark and he sat there for seven days, at the end of the seven days, see, Yahweh calls the floodgates of heaven to open up. Did you find it? Well, let's see. Seven and... Well, see, so, said someone seven said the tenth verse. But can I start up a little bit? Yes, you can. Uh, seven and, and uh, six. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. See, Noah was 600 years old. Noah was born in the year 1056. That's when Noah was born. And in the 600th year of his life, see, zero, just a, a, a placeholder. See, that can also represent six days. It represents six years. That's talking of prophetic time. See. Go ahead. It's six represent the flesh. Okay, this is the seventh verse. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark, because of the waters of the flood, of the clean beasts, and of the beasts that are not clean. And now, that don't mean that it was starting to rain, mm -hmm. and then when his family went in the ark, but Yahweh gave Noah a vision that he was going to destroy, he was going to destroy the world with water. See, that's Cloud is showing that uh, he's having a vision, see, and that's why he's building that ark there. Go ahead. The ninth verse. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark. So when those animals went into the ark, see, they went in, you're reading by twos. Now, I think over the next chapter you read about sevens. We might as well read that because people read that and they think all the animals went into the ark by twos. Mm -hmm. And, and they didn't go in the, all in the ark by twos. The unclean went in by twos. The clean went in by sevens. I didn't know that until they come down here. I always thought they all went in by twos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See. And, and, and I always like to remind people that when we're reading what we're reading about here in Genesis, this is the account of Moses' vision that he had when he was on the top of Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. This is Moses is, is writing this here. See, this is his vision. This isn't Noah writing something 
and passing it down to his children. It didn't happen that way. See, Yahweh showed it to Moses in a vision up here. See? And this is what we read in the account of his vision. Go ahead. You want me to go ahead in seven? Yes. Uh, there went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as Elohim had commanded Noah. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that on the seventh day that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the floodgates of heaven were opened. What, what, what? The 17th day of the second month. That's February the 17th. No. <laughs> see, we've come to understand, see, uh, see, that the first month with Israel, see, was April. Abib. We call it April Fools. And, and we were the fools. We were the one that was tricked, right? Because we thought April was the fourth month of the year. But with Israel, it's the first month of the year. So April is the first month, May is the second month, and the 17th day of the second month. So when Dr. Kelly had this vision, he showed us see, where to get this at. And you pick it up in, in Exodus the 12th and the 13th chapter. See, is where you find out what the first month of the year is. That's right. So when we find out, once we find out our starting point, the first month, then when we start reading about in the third month, see, in the fifth month, now we know how to go about getting it because we know where the first month is. Right. So it's May 17th, see, That's was right. he, when the flood waters was up, mm -hmm. upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast according to kind, mm -hmm. and all the cattle according to kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth according to kind, yes. and every fowl according to kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in went in male and female of all flesh, mm -hmm. as Elohim had commanded him, and Yahweh shut him in. See, now Noah didn't close the door. <laughs> Yahweh shut the door. That's right. Well, how come Noah couldn't close the door? Because the compassion that he has for people. <laughs> yeah, that's see, right. we don't want to see nobody out there. They banging and. Let me in right. and say we want to open the door, right? But right. it said what well, Yahweh shut no man opens. Mm. Right. See, so Yahweh shut that door to that ark. Right. Noah didn't do it, Yahweh done. That's it. right. See, go ahead and read. Please. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, mm -hmm. and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. Now did we read where the floodgates opened? Did I miss it? Let's see. Yeah, that's on the 11th verse. Okay. It says, in the 600th year no, of Noah's life. In, See, the, in the 600th year of Noah's life. In the second month. The second month. The 17th day of the, the 17th month. 17th day of the month. The same day were all the fountains. That same day were, were all, all the fountains. Of the great deep. Of the deep. Broken up. You know, there's a lot of water in this planet. Mm -hmm. they, they, they are constantly finding rivers of water. In this, in this earth that they didn't know was there. Go ahead. And the floodgates of heaven were opened. So here the f fountains of the deep. See, here's the fountains of the deep. It's opened up. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? And the floodgates of heaven. Now, now were the floodgates of heaven, it doesn't open. Mm -hmm. And you got all that water coming down, you got all that water coming up. Yep. You don't have time to go now. See? Because, see, that's likened unto the instant revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. So they ain't got time to go beating on the door, see, trying to get a boat, see, survival gear. They don't have time because that's the instant revelation of Yahshua. When the floodgates open up, see, and the heavens, waters open up, 
And then they caught up in the middle of it. Right. See, they ain't got time to run. See, and that's what we're talking about, the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah from heaven. See, we have to know him now because when he's revealed, see, instantaneously, it's over with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. see, yeah. It's over with. I would always hear that expression, it'd be just like walking. See, that line right there, see, it's all over with. Mm -hmm. You buy the eye and it's all over with. Yeah. See, we're in a new age, see. Yeah. You received an immortal body, glorified, or... You got a damnable body because, see, we're living in the judgment now. Right. See, right. They had that grace period, see, that they, 120 years, Yahweh gave them, see, you know, uh, to preach and warn the people. See, and we've been preaching, you know, been preached too, see, since 1960. See, that's when the founder said that uh, this age ended. Yeah. In 1960, and, we, and, and we've been in a grace period ever since. Mm -hmm. See, and many of us are just coming into this teaching since that time. He's just gleaning the field. See? So when all that water from heaven open up and the fountains of the deep open up, see, now what Yahweh did, he said he declared the end right from the beginning. See, because we, in the beginning it said the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the deep, right? See, so if, that, if it was that way in the beginning of this age, see, see, that was that dove, see. Yeah, that's my bird. Hmm. <laughs> my dove. Right. See, moving upon the face of the deep at the beginning. See, impregnating Mother Earth with the seed of life, see. So then see, at the end, see, you got the fountains of the deep open up. See, and that water from heaven. So it began with, with water, then it ends with water. See, uh, we didn't catch the seven. Yeah, that's higher up in. In but chapter seven. It's there. Yeah. <laughs> See? The, the, the two that went in, male and his female, those were unclean. Right. And the, the birds, all the birds went in by sevens. Mm -hmm. And the cattle that were clean went in by sevens. You found it? Yes, it's chapter seven. Okay. I'll start at one. And Yahweh said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me mm -hmm. in this generation. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take it, take to thee by sevens. So every clean beast you take to you by sevens. Mm -hmm. The male and his the female. The male and his female. And of the beasts that are not clean by two. See, then the beasts that were not, were not clean, those went in by two. The male and his female. And look, and Noah didn't have to go out <laughs> setting traps. See, animal calls, like I call my cats, and they come running, right? He didn't have to do that. See, Yahweh just calls the animals to come to Noah. Right. See, just like Adam. See, what he, he brought the animals, you read that, see, he brought the animals to Adam to see what he would call them. See, well, the same thing with Noah. Noah didn't have to go out looking for them. See, they just came to him. That's right. Yeah, that's seven fifteen, and they went in unto Noah. Yes, into the ark. See, and, and Noah, Noah didn't know what clean and unclean was. He didn't know. This is Moses writing this, and when you read the eleventh chapter of Leviticus, Yahweh establishes the dietary law with the children of Israel mm -hmm. when they're in the wilderness, and they learned, or Yahweh told them what they could eat and what they couldn't eat, what was clean right. and what was unclean. Mm -hmm. So when Moses is having his vision, when he's giving him this vision in the top of Mount Sinai, see, and he sees the, uh, when he sees the genealogies of, of, of man, see, come forth from Adam, then he sees uh, Noah, see, and those that went into the ark, then when, when Noah sees those animals going in the ark, I mean, excuse me, when Moses sees in his vision those animals enter to that ark, and by the way, this ark typifies or represents the, the spiritual body of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. See, and, 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 and uh, he's the true ark. See, this was just a, a type of the shadow. See, right. we, we've learned that. See, right. one door, one light. See, I'm the door, I'm the light. See, right. see three, three decks to the ark, see, represents the supernal nature. Mm -hmm. See, this is the ark of the safe, uh, ark of safety. See, Yahshua, he's the true sanctuary, the, the sanctum of sanctorium. See, yeah. is, is who he is. See, that's what this is all about. See, if, if we're going to be saved, 
If we're going to be saved, it's going to be in Yahshua the Messiah. And the founder said, that's what true predestination is. Mm -hmm. See, this true predestination is that we be saved in that's Yahshua right. the Messiah. He said, now that's true predestination. That's right. You see? So when no Moses is having his vision and he sees those animals go in by twos, then mm -hmm. Moses re recognizes that they were unclean. And when he sees them go in by sevens, he recognizes that those were clean. Mm -hmm. Noah didn't know that. Moses is writing that. Right. See? Yeah. See? And, 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 and when Moses writes there about the um, uh, uh, I want to see if this is the sixth chapter as well. When uh, he says, when he says uh, that the sons of Yahweh saw the daughters of men and they took the wife, everyone that they chose. See, and there were giants born unto them, Nephilim, they say. See, and, and, and the, the uh, interpretation of that by many uh, religious scholars and teachers and, 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 and preachers is that the sons of God, they say, are the angels in heaven. See, and they came down, see, and saw the daughters of men. Mm -hmm. See, and they were so attractive that they had relationships with them, and they brought forth these offspring. See, giants, Nephilim is what is what they're called. See, now that's a in misinterpretation mm -hmm. of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that it's in Matthew, uh, but when uh, when uh, This woman, uh, husband died. She married his brother. She had seven brothers that she married because one didn't uh, uh, didn't raise up offspring unto him. So when she died, see, then uh, his brother married her, mm -hmm. and they didn't have children. It's in Matthew. I, I can't think of where it's. It's also in Luke. Um, but each one had her, and none of them brought forth offspring. See, they were trying to trap the Messiah. Yeah. They were trying to trap him, see, by bringing this, uh, by bringing this uh, up. Because under the law, see, if, if, if my wife didn't have children and I died, then my brother took her to raise up children in my name, see. Mm -hmm. And if he didn't, uh, they didn't have any children, then my next brother took her. And pretty soon, all seven of them died, and then she died. So they asked the Messiah, they said, now, in the resurrection, whose wife is she? Because all seven, was it five of them? Seven. It was seven. They said all seven of them had her. So whose wife is she then in the resurrection? And what did the, the what did Yahshua say? He said, you do greatly err not knowing the scriptures. Now, I want you, I want to read that. Somebody Google that for him. <laughs> nobody, nobody found that yet. I'm no help. Oh, here we are. Um, 22 and 29. Matthew 22, 29. Thank you. Uh, Yahshua answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures. He said, Now you do err. We made a lot of errors. Mm. See, not knowing the scriptures. Nor the power of Yahweh. See, nor the power of Yahweh. Right. For in the resurrection. He said, now for in the resurrection. They neither marry. They don't marry. Nor are given in marriage. See, nor are they given in marriage. But are as the angels But in they heaven. are as the angels right. in heaven. See, right. angels don't procreate. Right. See, they don't marry. They don't have little baby angels. Right. You see. And look, and that ought to let you know that this mortal has to put on immortality. Right. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Yeah, that's right. See? So we shall be as the angels. Mm -hmm. well, well, how are the angels? Not only are they ministry and spirit, but they're incorporeal beings. Right. They're not super incorporeal beings. Right. They're incorporeal. Mm -hmm. See, Yahweh Elohim, see, he's super incorporeal. See, the angelic hosts, they're incorporeal beings. 
See, and we are corporeal beings. Right. Mm -hmm. See. Right. So this mortal, when he puts on immortality, see, then we shall be as the angels. Right. See, we're going to receive an incor uh, incorporeal body. Mm -hmm. See, a body that's not subject to death. That's the body that we're going to receive like Yahshua. One that's not subject unto death. Right. That's the that's the age. That's what we're looking forward to. Yeah. See, this mortal must put on, has put on immortality. See, right now we have a, 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 a eternal spirit. See, see, when we receive that uh, Holy Spirit, we have an eternal spirit, mm -hmm. see, dwelling in a physical body. Right. See, and as the founder said, the two don't go together. Right. See, the two don't go together. So you need that. An uh, immortal body to go along with the immortal spirit. See, and that's what we'll receive at the at the at the revelation of Yahshua. See, at the close of this present kingdom age. See, then Paul wrote this mortal. He must put on. Right. He must. You don't have no choice. Mm -hmm. He must put on Im right. immortality. Right. And when this mortal side put on immortality, he said, "Then shall be brought to pass the saying." See. Death is swallowed up in victory. See? Mm -hmm. And that next age, see, in this age, see, we're, we're learning of Yahshua, but we got the hindrance of the satanic spirit. See, right. he hinders us in many ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. see? But at the close of this age, see, when he see, shall be destroyed, see, then we'll be learning, see, in this next age, see, see, without the hindrance of this physical body and without the hindrance of the satanic spirit. Right. See? And that's way ahead of where we're talking about, right? See. So let's go back. <laughs> See, so then uh, 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 Noah, we were talking about Noah. So then uh, those, those sons, when they, when they had those relationships, see, uh, the sons of Yahweh saw the daughters of man and took the wife of every one that they choose, see. Then it was Moses, see, that he wrote. And again, I just have to get the scriptures for you. See, when they went over to Canaan's land, mm -hmm. Yahweh told Israel, when they get over in that land, don't mingle with those nations. Right. He said, don't give your sons to their daughters right. to be married. Mm -hmm. Don't give your daughters right. to their sons see, to be married to them and right. take them in. Because what they're going to do, they're going to turn you away from them, right. worshiping me. Right. You're going to start worshiping idols. And that's exactly what they did when they got over to Canaan's land yeah. for 40 years. See, they were obedient. But after the death of Joshua and all the elders, yeah. see, then they get, began to mingle oh, yeah. with those other nations over there. Mm -hmm. See? And they had offspring with those nations over there. Right. See? So when Moses, when, when, when this happens with Israel, see, Yahweh told Moses, see, you read back over there um, in about um, Deuteronomy uh 35th, 36th chapter, when, 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 before they go over into Canaan's land, Yahweh shows Moses what Israel's going to do when they get over in Canaan's land. And Moses told Israel, see, when you get over to Canaan's land, I know what you're going to do. You're going to get over there and see, you're going to worship idols, see, and you're going to marry them. He told them what, they were gonna, what was going to happen to them. Israel said, oh, we're not going to do nothing like that. But Yahweh showed him what, was, what they was going to do when they get over there. See, he said, when you do it, see, now this is what's going to happen to you. See, so when they got over there, and, and, and when, they, when Moses saw that in his vision, see, then when Moses sees back here with Noah, see, and he sees, recognizes the righteous lineage, and he recognizes that unrighteous lineage, then Moses writes, the sons of Yahweh saw the daughters of men, and they took the wife, everyone which they chose. Now Moses is looking at Israel back there. He's right. not watching angels and men mingle. Right. See, the sons of Yahweh is Israel. That's the righteous, righteous land, that righteous seed. Right. And they saw the daughters of men, that's the unrighteous right. seed. If you will, that's the Jew and the Gentile mingling together. Right. Mm -hmm. See? Right. That's what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. See? And they took the wife, every one that they chose. See, that, that, that's what Moses is writing about. See? So because of that, see, then the wickedness of man multiplied. See, Yahweh saw it and he did. And he wasn't pleased with it and he destroyed the world That's with right. water. Right. See, then this next age that we, we talked about, see, and, and look, and this age ended. That brought this age to an end. See, and when this next age began, see, that, that ark, see, it rested, 
see, on top of <coughs> Mount Ararat, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. See, and when Noah, Ararat, A R T, Ark. So when Noah and his family came out of that ark, see, then the first thing Noah did when they came out of that ark, he offered up a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. now when this age begins, this post diluvian age, see, when it begins, see, now the the the, the world is starting all over. We read uh, in Genesis about the eleventh or thirteenth chapter. It said two years after the flood, Arphax had a son. So we started the counting years. From the flood all the way down to the crucifixion of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You see? So when Noah came out of uh, Noah came out of the ark, then what Noah did, see, then he offered up a, a, a sacrifice. See, so that's showing that this post-Diluvian age, see, this age began with the sacrifice. Because right. when he came out of the ark, Noah offered up a sacrifice. So when it, if this age began with the sacrifice, see, and Yahweh said he declared the end from the beginning, then guess how it has the end? It has the end with the sacrifice, see. But the world, we miss this end right here. Yeah. We miss that end. Mm -hmm. And what what they did, see, what they did, see. Yahshua was born in the year 4000. Mm -hmm. I just got jumbled, jumbled stuff up here. Okay, let's erase some stuff. Um, uh, let's try Galatians again, uh, 4 and 4. Now, when Yahshua was born, See, he come, he's born in the year 4,000. Uh, this age, i show you how you, how, how you actually come up with that. This age lasted 2,377 years. That brought this age to an end. So if you subtract 33 years from that, see, then that takes it down to 2344. That's the year that Yahshua was born. That's 2,344 years after the flood. So now if you take the 2344 and add the 1656 to it, that's the post diluvian age, add 1656 to that, then what do we come up with? Is that about right? Mm -hmm. 4,000. So that's when Yahshua was born in the year, four, it's actually, yeah, 4,000. See, that's the year that he's born in. In this year, 4,000. That's 4,000 years. That's 4,000 years from the fall of Adam to the birth of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. See, that's his birth. See, in the year 4,000. See, now, uh, what this... Um, um, not a lexicographer. Um, but his name is Dionysus, and excuse my Latin, Exig Exigus. Something along that line. <laughs> that close, wasn't it? Dionysus Exodus. This um, was one of the men that uh, uh, done that does chronology. Chronologists. See? And what they did, they calculated the birth of the Messiah. And they calculated his birth to be in the year 4004. Mm -hmm. Now, where they get this 4004 from is they calculated to the time of the death of Herod. Because they said it was, it was Herod that sought the child's life. And according to their research, Herod died in the year 4004. He died, they say he died the same year that Jesus Christ was born because he's the one that sought to slay him. So the same year that Herod died, they said Jesus was born. 
So they have Jesus born in the year 4004. And what chronologists have done, see, they began the <coughs> chronology for this age that we live in. They began it at his birth. Yes. So 4004, that was our first year. And from, the, from, his, from his birth in 4004, that takes us all the way up to where we're at now in the year 2024. See, it's, it's how they calculate that. Mm -hmm. See, now, it was the founder that had this vision to show us that that was incorrect. Mm -hmm. Now, what he did that they haven't done, see, like, he showed us where that line of demarcation was. See, Hebrews 9.26. Mm -hmm. See, they have, the, they have the, the Savior, him being born, live, died, buried, and raised from the grave in this world or this age that we live in now. Mm -hmm. See, they have him born in the same time frame that we're in. Yeah. And that's not so. That's, that's not right. true. That's not true. That's right. He didn't live in this age, or he didn't live in this world. Now, when I use the word world, we say, what do you mean? It was another world other than this one? <laughs> yeah. no, he, didn't, he didn't live in this age. Right. Yeah. That's right. Now, uh, really? yeah, go ahead and read it. Hebrews 9, 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, in the end of the age, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now it said, well, be, be, before you read that, uh, read that again, but let's get Galatians uh, fourth chapter. Let's read that one. Galatians four, do you want one or Galatians uh, uh, four? Not get bigger than the fourth verse. Galatians <laughs> four and four. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh sent forth his He said, now when the fullness of time was come, See, when was that? See, that was the pro prophetic birth of Yahshua the Messiah. See, and when the fullness of time was come, what happened? Yahweh sent forth his son. Yahweh sent forth his son. Made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made subject to the law. That's Mary. That's him taking on shaping form in Mary. Yes. See, at the appropriate time, at the fullness of time. Yes. He, that's a virgin is going to conceive and bring forth the son. So when the fullness of time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son, made of a woman. Mm -hmm. Made subject to the law. Made subject to or under the mm -hmm. law. To redeem them. So Yahshua the Messiah, see this post diluvian age, see this was a dispensation. Of the law. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua was born under the law. Right. See, we talked about rightly dividing the word of truth, putting things in their proper place. See, this age that we live in, see, we're not under the law. Right. The law wasn't given in this age of this world that we live in. Right. This law wasn't given to Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. See, this age ended, and the law that was given to Adam back here only applied to Adam. See, and this post diluvian age, see, this post diluvian age, see, this is the dispensation of of the law. Mm -hmm. And when Yahshua come in, he's born under the dispensation of the law. Not only was he born under the dispensation of the law, he lived, he died under the dispensation of the law, he was buried under the dispensation of the law, mm -hmm. and he rose from the grave under the dispensation of the law. Mm -hmm. So when the fullness of time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son, made of a woman, made subject to the law, to do what? To redeem them that were under the That's law. That's when he came in to redeem them that were under the law. That see? we might receive the adoption. That we might receive the adoption of sons, of sons see, through Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So Yahshua was born under the dispensation of the law. Now what they done, see, they when he's born under the dispensation of the law, they didn't know that there was a line of demarcation. Mm -hmm. right. They missed it. Right. Yeah. But the founder pointed it out. Hebrews 9.26. Hebrews 9.26. For then he, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, in the end of the age, 
hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice now, of himself. Now this is what they missed. When Yahshua was crucified out there on the cross, see, that was the end of this post diluvian age. Right. Mm -hmm. That was the end of that world. Because Yahshua was crucified. And that's what it said. Once in the end of the age mm -hmm. hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Okay. See, so since he was crucified under the born, lived, died, was buried, and rose from the grave, see, <coughs> under the dispensation of the law, see, when he was crucified out there on the cross, see, he was 33 years old. Mm -hmm. That's how old when he was crucified out there. See, they already have a four year error because they started to count when he was four years old. Right. See, so they have him living under the, in this age of this world that we live in. Right. He didn't live in this age of 2024. He didn't live over here. Right. See, he lived back in this post diluvian age right. under the dispensation of the law. See, so what the founder showed us then, he said, so in order to get the correct chronology for this age, he said then, what you have to do, you have to subtract 33 years see, off of this number here. Right. Because they don't have this line of demarcation. Right. See. So they're counting from his birth, which they say is 4004, right up to 2024. So they missed the end of the world right. here. Yeah. They see it here, but they missed this one. That's right. See, so they're not able to divide or put things in their proper place. So when we put things in their proper place, see, see, when he's crucified out there on the cross, see, see. Now that brings this age, that post diluvian age, see. Right. That brought that age to an end. Mm -hmm. Now, this present kingdom age that we live in now, see, just like it was a grace period back here with Noah of 120 years, see, there was a grace period of 50 days. Mm -hmm. When Yahshua was crucified, he rose from the grave, he tarried on the earth for 40 days. This is under the dispensation of the law. Then he ascended into heaven. See, mm -hmm. then 10 days later, See, that's your 50. You on the earth for 40 days. 10 days later, 50. That's the day of Pentecost, right. see, or the year Jubilee. Mm -hmm. See, then that's when this present kingdom age begins. Mm -hmm. See, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's right. in, in this present kingdom age. See, so when Yahshua was, uh, uh, so what you have to do then, uh, what they failed to do, see, they have these 33 years, mm -hmm. see, attached to this present kingdom age. So what you have to do, you have to subtract 33 years right. from this 2024. See? Which gives us... Mm -hmm. 1991 would be the correct... Well, I'm not done with that. That's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of the correction. See? Because 33 years don't belong in this age. No. Mm -hmm. Now there's also a four year error. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Because they have him born when they started their count in 4004. He was already four years old. Right. Because he was born in the year 4000. See, that's when the sun was placed in the sky on the fourth day. See? So he comes in in the year 4000. That was the prophecy there. You see, so you have to, this four-year error that's in this 2024, you have to subtract that. No, you got to subtract it. See, because in this 2024, you have the 33 years of his uh, crucifixion, and, it be, and they begin this count when he was four years old. So you have a 34-year 34 34-year 34 error. 33 years you have to subtract because he didn't live in this present kingdom age. And you have to subtract the four-year error because he was born in the year 4,000, not four. Yeah, and what mistake a lot of people make when they subtract this four years, what's the 87? 87. See, what they make the mistake of, they subtract the four-year error, then they add it back in. You can't add it back in because the four years, it belongs in this post diluvian age. Right. See, they didn't, they didn't have this line of demarcation. Once the line of demarcation is drawn, see, now you see where the error is. He's born in the year 4000, not 4004. So you got, you got to get rid of those four years. 
then he lives 33 years. So if he's born in 4004 and he lives 33 years, that means he was crucified at 37. See? Yeah, if, if he's born. Just follow me. They say he's born in the year, this is what they teach. He was born in the year 4004. So if he lived 33 years, then they got him being crucified in the year 4037. He wasn't. He was crucified when he was 33 years old. That would have been in the year 4000. 33, because he's born in the year 4000, not 4004. He raised the 34. Yeah. Okay. You confused? Good. Say it again. All right, let's do it again. Dionysus says Yahshua was born in the year 4004. The witnesses say that he was born in the year 4000, not 4004. Then they have him living to be. Uh, so when they begin the, the, the count for this present kingdom age of 20, 2024, they start in the year 4004, and from that time, it takes us up to 2044. So they don't know that the world ended at his crucifixion. So they ran all these years together. So we read that Yahshua was born, lived, and died under the dispensation of the law. So when we put that line of demarcation up here, see, now we have to put those, that 33 years, that's that 2024, you have to subtract 33 years off of this age because they belong in this post diluvian age. Right. See, he's crucified, that brought this age to an end. See, so uh, you have to subtract 33 years off of that because he lived on this side of the cross, see, under the dispensation of the law. See, then they have him born when he's fought in the year 4004. He wasn't born in the year 4004, he was born in the year 4000. So you have a four year error in there. So you have to subtract the 33 years that don't belong in this age, which takes us to 1991. Then you have to subtract the four-year error. See, it would take us to the year 1987. See, now 1987, that would be the correct... This present kingdom age, that would be the correct year See, of this present kingdom of age would be 1987. Because Yahshua didn't live in this age. He didn't live in this world that we live in. He lived under the dispensation of the law. So that would be, now don't go put in 1987 when somebody say, well, you feel like your, you feel like your application. You feel like your, you feel, thank you. You go to fill out your application, you probably won't get the job. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? But that takes us to the year 19, 1987 would be the, the correct date for this present kingdom age. See, that's minus the 33 years that Yahshua lived. See, under the dispensation of the law and the four-year heir. See? And, and, and this age began with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, or begin with the offering up of a sacrifice. So then this post diluvian age, it had to end with the offering of a, sac of a sacrifice. And that sacrifice was Yahshua out there on the cross. See, Then on the day of Pentecost, which was 50 days later, that began this present kingdom age. And this age began with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. See, And it said, clove and tongues of fire see, rested upon them. See, so then if it began that way, then if the ends declared from the beginning, then this age that we live in now, see, it has to end the self same way. See, it's got to end with fire. See, and that's what we're looking at down here, the consummation of uh, this earth. See, uh, going to be destroyed with fire because it began that way and it has to end that self way. 
See, and the thing that um, um, saves us, see, when we have the Holy Spirit formed in us, mm -hmm. he said that he make his ministers as what? Flames. As a flames of fire. See, so fire don't burn fire. Right. So if we're clothed in his son, see, then that's all he's going to see is his son formed in you and I. And that's what Paul said, this mortal, he's got to put on immortality. You see, and, and, and then once that happens, <coughs> Then once that happens, see, see then the revelation of gospel and the Messiah from heaven, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Did we ever read 1 Corinthians 10 and 11? Let's read that. We read Hebrews 9 26. See, that was the closing of this antediluvian age. So you want 2 Corinthians 10 and 11? Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Now all these things happened unto them as a warning to others. See, these things that befell Israel, see, in this post diluvian age, see, those things happened as a warning to others. And they are written for our instruction. And they're written for our instruction. Upon whom the end of the age is come. Upon whom the end of the age has what? Is come. Now what, where's Paul writing that at? See, Paul's writing that in his present kingdom age. Mm -hmm. And those things that happened under that dispensation of the law with Israel, see, they happen and they're written for our admonishment, for warning unto us, upon whom the end of this age or this world See, it's come. See, so this present kingdom age that we live, that we're in now, see, Yahshua, he didn't live in this present kingdom age. He wasn't born in this present kingdom age. He was born under the dispensation of the law. He was born, lived, died, buried, rose from the grave, see, ascended into heaven. All of that took place under the dispensation of the law. And what began this age, or this world that we live in, was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See, on the day of Pentecost. That's what we read that about, read that in uh, Acts, uh, the first chapter. See, where he told them, see, to tear you here, see, in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. See. Ooh, let's read a little bit of that. Acts 1 and, let's see. Uh, start, start down there where, uh, 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 when he ascends into it, on that cloud. Let's okay. pick a little thought of one. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, and that's Acts 1 and I'll say 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come. You can back up a little bit. Okay. You might have saw the first verse. <laughs> the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yahshua began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible mm -hmm. proofs, being seen of them forty days. So that's that was doing that when he rose from the grave. He tarried on earth for forty days. See, not not only did they see Yahshua, see, but when he rose from the grave, Matthew eleven twenty seven, they said that many of the sons that slept in the heart of the earth they arose and went into Jerusalem with him. See, and they were seen of many, many of those people, they saw, see, those sons, see, uh, and witnessed, uh, uh, like I say, Jeremiah, see, Moses, see, John, they saw them people. Uh, see, and that's what you see right here. See, he has the resurrection, he has a key in his hand. See, now, on, on some of the charts in the, in the textbook, you see that when he raises from the grave, you see some crosses there also. See, because what is showing that everybody didn't get up. That's why I said many of the sons that slept in the heart of the earth, they arose, but many of them didn't get up. <clears throat> but those that did, they arose and went into Jerusalem with... Let's read that, Matthew 27, 52. So you, you, you know that it's there. Matthew 20, 27 and 52. Yes. And the graves were opened... Uh, 51. <laughs> Matthew 27, 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in twain. You <laughs> just got to keep going back and back. But he's talking about when Yahshua was crucified out there on the cross. 
See, and, and that they recognized that they had done a bad deed. Mm -hmm. See, because when he was crucified out there, it said that the rocks broke, the earthquake, the veil in the temple was written twain, and they recognized that truly this was the Son of Man. See, where they had been mocking him. You, you're going to see the, a witness of that come up with this solar eclipse that we're hearing. It's going to be a reflection of what you read about right here. Go ahead. Matthew 27, 50. Yahshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, mm -hmm. yielded up the spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in twain yes. from the top to the mm -hmm. bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks broke. Yes. And the graves were opened see, the and graves many were bodies... Opened. And many bodies of the sons which slept of arose. the sons which slept, they arose and came out of the grave. And came out of the grave. And this is no physical graveyard resurrection. See, these people are having a vision of these men. Mm. See, everybody didn't see them. Right. Yeah. See, this ain't no physical graveyard resurrection that's taking place here. And look, and this is not happening. This takes place after Yahshua rose from the grave. They didn't get up before him. He's got to get up. That's right. Then once he get up, see, then those witnesses, they get up. And they go into Jerusalem, and they're seen of many. Go ahead and read it. And the graves were opened, yes. and many bodies of the sons which and slept. And that, that's why you see a key, a key right here. Now, he don't have no... See? <laughs> He's the key. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. See. Go ahead. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. And came out of the grave after his resurrection. And went into the holy city. And went into the holy city. And appeared unto many. And appeared unto many. See, they appeared unto many. See, above uh, for, for during that forty day period. Now, they said it appeared unto about five hundred brethren. See, during that uh, forty days, that forty day period. See. Uh, go ahead. You want more here? Oh uh, no. Uh, what would we have We're in Acts. Yeah, let's go back to Acts. Acts one and three. So I just wanted to point out, see, uh, so a, a lot of times you see crosses there because they're showing that everybody didn't get up. But once he rose from the grave, see, and went on into Jerusalem, that many of the sons that slept in the heart of the earth they rose and went into Jerusalem with him after his resurrection and were seen of many during that forty day period that he carried on the earth. Mm -hmm. see, go ahead. Acts one and three. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion mm -hmm. by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. See, that's what we were just talking about. And Go speaking ahead. of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh, mm -hmm. and being assembled together, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. So he's got these eleven disciples, and they were told, see, to don't leave Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But wait for the promise. Wait of the for Father. the promise of the Father. Which saith he, which he said, you have heard of me, mm -hmm. for John truly baptized with water. See, John truly baptized with water. You can't argue with that. John truly baptized with water. But ye shall... That's the conjunction. Right. See, John baptized with water, see, but you, see, they had already been baptized with water. He said, but you, what? Shall be baptized with the Holy now, Spirit. Now, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Not yet. many days from now. So you stay right here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Rabbi, wilt thou at this time restore again the see, kingdom? Now, are you going to restore at this time, see, the kingdom? Read. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons mm -hmm. which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive. And, 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 and we, we, let me say this while we're there. See, although we talk about this closing of this age and this, uh, uh, this correct time in here, we're not prophesying when this age is going to end. Yeah. See, each one of these ages has been approximately 2,000 years long. Right. See, this was a short age, 1,656 years. See, one day with Yahweh is as 1,000 years, and 1,000 years is as one day. So that's 1,656 years, you see, see, that's a short age, just short of two days mm -hmm. yeah. with Yahweh. See, this age was 2,377 years long. See, just a little bit more, just a little bit longer than a day. But it's approximately two days long. Mm -hmm. See, that's four days or 4,000 years. See, now here we are in 1987. See, we're just short of two days with Yahweh. Right. A day with Yahweh is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. So we are, what, 13 years short yeah. of the year 2000. See, 
that would make that six days. And it was on the six days that Yahweh created the man. See, we're talking prophetic time here. On the sixth day, Yahweh created the man. Then what did he do on the seventh day? He see, he rested, see. And Adam, see, you see him up here, he's entered in to that rest. See, and that's what we have to do. We have to make our election sure so we can enter into that rest. See, we don't have no long time. See, we don't have no long time. See, so each one of these days is approximately two days long or 2,000 years. See. And, 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 you know, uh, I think it was, um, again, over in Galatians, the third chapter. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed right. from him that called you. Let's just read that and we'll, we'll get back over there. That's the first because he, Dr. Kelly had this visit in 1931. And many of us wasn't around when he had this visit. Now, I just talk about myself. See, I've only been in class for just over 40 years. See, with Yahweh, that's how long? That's about an hour. Prophetic time. One hour. See, now you have people that's been in this class for 50 years, 60 years. See? They've been in just a little bit longer than an hour. See? In the first hour, they were professing Yahshua the Messiah being their Savior. Now he would have won another hour. See? And now they done changed the story. Mm -hmm. And that's why Yahshua said to those men, see, when he went into the garden to pray, he said, stay here and watch with me. See? And he went on to the garden to pray and come back and they sleep, Peter and <laughs> Peter and them, they sleep. He said, couldn't you watch with me just one hour? Mm -hmm. See, they done fell asleep. See, now here we are, see, just been in class just an hour or a little more than an hour. See, many people done fell asleep. Okay. And I don't mean their eyes are closed up, but they done fell away from the truth. Okay. See, they done denied the things that Yahweh has given unto them in just an hour. Right. See, we think it's a, a long period of time, 40, 50 years. Wow, man, you've been around a long time. No, nope. Yahweh said just been an hour right. or just yeah. under an hour. See, we're talking prophetic time here, see. Yeah. It's not no long time, and that's why uh, uh, Paul said this in Galatians. He said, I marvel. Read it, read it for me, please. Galatians 1 and 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed. See, I marvel. See, that you are so soon removed. From him that called you. From him that called you. Into the grace. He of just the called you into this teaching. Just gave you, see, a knowledge of him. Revealed himself to you. Yeah. And within an hour, see, you done removed yourself from mm -hmm. it. You done followed after something else. And, 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 you know, and if you really see it, you just marvel that if you would think that somebody was going to corrupt this teaching, it wouldn't come from within this school. Yeah. If somebody's going to profane his name, it wouldn't come from those within this organization. But the founder said, this school, he said, if it goes on long enough, you, you won't be able to tell it between the church, right. the difference between this organization and the church. Mm -hmm. Right. See? And we have come to that point. Sure, yeah. We, we've come to that point. Oh, yeah. See. Look at the way a lot of these schools are being ran now. See, look at our international board. See, look at the, the doctrine that they've changed up, that they profess, see, was the truth. They don't uphold the Constitution. Mm -hmm. See. They're concerned about in house PR. We're not worried about the world. See, we're doing in house public relations. That's about the stupidest. That's an oxymoron. That's just stupid. <laughs> Anybody work for public relations? What does public relations do? Reach out to the public. Now, how do you have in-house public relations? You're already a part of the company. You're already a part of the organization. How is that in-house public relations? No such word. Yeah. <laughs> they just make up stuff, and then we follow it. Right. We support it because it comes from headquarters. <laughs> They don't uphold the Constitution. No. Go, go ahead. I'm wasting my time. I marvel that you are so soon removed. He said, I'm, I'm marvel that you are so soon removed from him that, from called, him that you called you into the grace of the Messiah. See, into the grace of the Messiah. Unto another evangelism. Unto another gospel. Which is see, not another. See, which is not another. That's right. But there be see. some that trouble you and will see. pervert the glad tidings. And to you who are troubled. Right. Mm -hmm. There'll be something that trouble you and would pervert 
And that's exactly what has happened. That's, right. mm -hmm. yeah. that's exactly what happened. Has happened in this close of this age. I had you get into something else. I'm, I'm forgetting what we're we're at. Acts one. Just go back over to Acts. Acts 1 and 8. Yes. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit. So he said, now you stay right here in Jerusalem see, until you receive see, power from on high. Mm -hmm. And when you receive power from on high, do what? And you shall be witnesses unto me. Then you shall be witnesses. Both in Jerusalem. Of me in Jerusalem. And see, that's what happens. See, when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, then we should be witnesses unto Yahshua the Messiah. See, that's how we know whether you have something or not. So if you witness it unto Dr. Kelly, mm. so you witness it unto Dr. Harris, see, you tell it on yourself. Yeah. You tell it on yourself. We ain't talking about you. You're talking about yourself. You see. And you, you, you letting me know that that law is not written in your heart. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to write my law in your inward parts and I'll write it in your heart. Yeah. Now he's that law, that spirit law operated in us. Yeah. And if you preach something different than what he gave us, mm -hmm. see, then what the vision, mm -hmm. see, then that law just ain't written in you. Right. Mm -hmm. See, go ahead and finish reading. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea yes. and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the. So earth. that's what he's telling those men. Read. And when he had spoken these things. While they beheld. Now, when he spoke these things, see, now all this is under the dispensation of the, uh, all this, see, under the dispensation of the law. That's where we're at. See, Pentecost hadn't taken place yet. Right. That's right. See, you have that 50 day grace period, see. Read. He was taken up. So, after he said those things, that he's taken up. And a cloud received him out of and their And this life. is where they say Jesus ascended into heaven on a cloud. And he's going to return on a cloud, see. The vision, the founder's vision, say, no, he's not talking about a cloud out there. Mm -hmm. Hemisphere. You got a hemisphere, your brain, that's a cloud. See. And these men are having a vision. See. Read. And while they look steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. And they see him in a vision, see. This right here is what this happened. If somebody else was standing there, they wouldn't have seen it. Just like Moses at that burning bush. Anybody standing around would have seen what he saw. Right. That's why them cattle didn't take off running. This is a vision taking place in here. And in their mind, they see him ascend into heaven on a cloud. But this thing is so real to them. Like you have dreams of how real your dreams are. See, your body responds to them. You, you react to them. You might get up and go in the kitchen and start cooking something. <laughs> Walk out the door. <laughs> right? We do all kind of things, see, because yeah. it's so real to us, mm -hmm. right? So these men are having this vision, and they're following this vision. Read. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by now them. Now there's two men standing by them, in quite a pair watching what's going on. <laughs> these two men are angels. Mm -hmm. Read. Which also said, ye men of Galilee. So they said, now you men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing hey, up into heaven? What you standing there gazing up into heaven for? <laughs> this same Yahshua. Which this is, same Yahshua. Which is taken up which from is taken you. Up from you into, heaven, into heaven. Shall so come in like manner. He shall so come in like manner. He's going to return the same way that you see him go away into heaven. As you have seen him go into heaven. So the whole world, see, when they reading that, then they see Jesus ascending to heaven on a cloud. So they're looking for Jesus to come back on a cloud. Mm -hmm. And he hadn't come back yet, but they're looking for it. Mm -hmm. See, but they missed it. Just like they missed the close of this age. Mm -hmm. See, with his crucifixion. See, they, they missed the close of this age. They missed the beginning of it as well, of this next age. Mm -hmm. see, they missed it because it began on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. The same Yahshua that you saw go away into heaven on a cloud. <laughs> see, that's right here. Right within their confines of their mind. See, they're going to see him return in like manner. Mm -hmm. See, how was that? On the day of Pentecost, what happened? Go ahead and read it. Oh, you want the second chapter? Yes, please. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. So now this is 50 days later. This is the day of Pentecost. This is the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Read. While they were all with one accord. Now he told them to stay in Jerusalem until they received power from on high. So here they were obedient unto it. They're right there in Jerusalem. See, in the upper room. Read. Suddenly there came a sound from then heaven. Then all of a sudden there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. Yes. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. See, they weren't talking about a strong wind blowing. See. 
But this is the Holy Spirit returning in like manner as they saw him go. Hmm. Read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. And the witness to it, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of fire. Like it's fire. Yeah. And rested upon and each rested of them. upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy See, Spirit. See, windows closed, doors shut. Here come this sound of a mighty rush of wind, mm -hmm. and it filled all the house that they were in. Mm -hmm. See, this is the house. Mm -hmm. And they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's right. right. See, read. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they just were not there, blah, 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 like mm -hmm. the world's talking about. That's not what they're doing. Right. We don't have time to get into it, but go ahead. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. See, I, that's good. So I, I just want you to know, see, that on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. see, that's what took place at the opening of this present kingdom age. It began with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See, right. they were in the upper room, see, where the windows closed, the doors shut, and there comes the sound from heaven, mm -hmm. see, as a mighty rush of wind, and they mm -hmm. filled all their house, see, and they received the Holy Spirit. That's and they appeared right. on them cloven tongues like an unto fire, mm -hmm. see. Now that, now that began... This present kingdom age right. right here. See, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and with fire. See, and we've gone on down through this present kingdom age. That promise was given to the Jew first. Mm -hmm. See, the Jew wasn't, uh, they, they had already been baptized. See, before uh, Pentecost, they were already baptized before Yahshua was crucified. See, now they're sitting in the upper room and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. See, now this happened with the Jews. See, uh, uh. In, in, in A.D. 34, see, Joshua was crucified in A.D. 33, closer to A.D. 34, because he was, well, 33 years old, 33 and a half, see, close to 34. You know, it's, it's, a, it's another good principle with that. I like to show you sometimes, you know. But if you go back, I just tell you, you can work it out yourself. Go back there in Genesis, and you read about the genealogies of, uh, of Adam, and when you get down there to... Uh, to uh, um, um, Enoch, count the years from Enoch down to the birth of Noah, and it'll add up to 434 years from the birth of Enoch to the birth of Noah. It'll be 434 years. See, why 434 years? And when Noah was born, his name was called Noah for what reason? But he shall comfort the people concerning the work and toil of their hands. See, that's what Noah's going to be given the vision, see, to preach, to warn the people. It's because of the idolatrous behavior. And Yahweh was going to use him to preach and warn the people, see, to, uh, of the, the, the impending doom, see. So now, Noah being a comforter, going to give them comfort concerning their work and their toil. Then what was Yahshua the Messiah? What did he come in to do? He come in to comfort the people mm -hmm. concerning the work of their hands. That was the law. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't keep that law. So he came in to do away with that law. So Yahshua, he come in in the year 4,000. He was 33 years old or closer to 34 when he was crucified. Mm -hmm. So you find those same 34 years at the birth of Noah. Yeah. Go ahead and finish reading. Uh... You wouldn't read nowhere? I was, we were reading in Acts, the first, second chapter. Okay. Without okay, Pentecost. No, no. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I think I lost my thoughts there. Okay. AD 33. Well, was AD, yeah, was AD 33 uh, uh, when Yahshua was crucified, see, but seven, seven, seven years later uh, mm -hmm. after, was the day of, was the day of Pentecost. When uh, um, on the day of Pentecost, when the Jews received the gift of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. see, then it was seven years later in the same present kingdom mm -hmm. age, mm -hmm. see, that the Gentiles mm -hmm. were grafted in. Right. And the Gentiles are going to be grafted in not by the works of the law. That's right. But they're going to be grafted in by faith. Mm -hmm. See, the Jews came in under the works of the law. And that's why they had to be water baptized before they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. But it wasn't going to be so with the Gentiles. See, when you read about the Gentiles, see, mm -hmm. on down there in, 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 in the book of Acts, when it came time to graft them in, seven years later, this is in the present kingdom age, this age that we live in now. Mm -hmm. Seven years later, when it, down at Cornelius' house, 
see, to be grafted in. Peter's up on the rooftop. Then all of a sudden, this great sheep let down. He waiting on dinner, lunch. And he sits up there and falls asleep. Then y'all will let this great sheep down. And it tells Peter, see, arise, Peter, and kill and eat. And Peter said, not so. Because in that great sheep was all manner of unclean beasts. See, pig and split hoofs, camels, because they couldn't eat those kind of things. See, and Peter said, arise, kill and eat, Peter. Peter said, no, nothing unclean or uncommon had ever entered into my mouth. And, he, and Yahweh said, what I've cleansed is clean indeed. And that happened three times. See, before that sheet was let up. And when it was let up the third time, there came a knock at the door. See, and there were seven men down at that door. And they come to get Con Peter, see, to bring him down to Cornelius. Because Cornelius, at the same time, he's having a vision. And he's told in his Venice vision to send for Peter. Because he's got something to tell you about. Yeah. So he sends for Peter. And those men, they pick Peter up and they go back down in Cornelius' house. Now, see, now this is a... a, a, a A.D. 40 now. See, this is seven years after right. Pentecost. Right. See, that, that took place in A.D. 33. Then seven years later, A.D. 40, see, all this taking place within that hour. See, and in A.D. 40, see, now it's time for the Gentiles to be grafted in to the body. See, and then Peter and, and, uh, 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 and those men that was with him, they go down to Cornelius' house. And when they... It, <laughs> Give me two hours and I still didn't. <laughs> you know, Yahweh has just given us so much. Yeah. yeah. He's given us so much, and, and I, I really thank you for extending this time to me. I hope it was beneficial to the class. Yeah. Uh, he's given us so much and uh, to know about Him, we can't get it in two hours. You know, we can't get it in two weeks. We can't get it in 40 years. You know. Yeah. So come to class uh, as often as you can and learn. All you can, because the founder said we're going to need it. Amen. See, to keep us stable, to keep us steadfast, right. see, uh, at the close of the age. And he's, he's right. We need every bit of them, and we need each other. So thank you again for the, uh, extending the time to me. I, I appreciate it. Amen. Court, we invite all our visitors and friends to return and study with us. Classes are held every Tuesday and Thursday from 7.30 p.m. till 9.30 p.m. and on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at 308 Montgomery Avenue. Now with the class please stand to be led in benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power both before all times and now and ever. Let the class say. Hallelujah.